build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. First online order, 10% off. Promo code online. Monday night. Welcome here to this episode of Over the Boards here at Moe's Camp and Village Raleigh. Zach Salaya alongside the man of the half hour, co head coach Mike Gazillo of the NC State men's hockey team. Now this episode is sponsored by Moe's Camp and Village where you can call at 919-999-3999 or at 919.catering.moes.com. That's a lot of nines, coach. All right, so let's get this started here. Coach, how was your Thanksgiving break? Oh, very good. Thank you. How about yours? It was a lot of sleep. A lot, a lot of sleep? A lot of turkey prior to the sleep? Let that trip to pain kick in? Yeah. Maybe, pretty much so. What was on your menu, Coach? Uh, you know, turkey, potatoes, corn. So the usual. Uh, cheesecake, uh, apple pie, you know, yeah. So you seem to be in pretty good spirits today, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, so is the team as well. And you know, going into this um, second semester here, the team seems to be really doing well because they clinch a, essentially clinch a spot in the ACCHL tournament. So talk to us a little about the state of the team. How does the team feel after this tremendous 8-4 and four semester? Yeah, I mean, I think the guys are coming together quite well. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm in the locker room. Guys all get along. Uh, I think the uh, upperclassmen are doing a good job with the uh, with the new guys coming in, you know, kind of bringing them along. And uh, I think it was a, you know, maybe a little tough earlier on, but, you know, we're, we're kind of making some good adjustments and the, the guys are reacting to it well. And, um, yeah, I mean, losing, I mean, uh, well, winning never, never hurts, right? So uh, spirits are good. Atmosphere is good. Very happy. And talking about adjustments as well, Coach, a recurring factor for your team has been that discipline factor. There hasn't been a lot of physicality penalties, but it's been more of bad stick placement. Now, is that a matter of your team trying to figure out where they want to put their stick, or is it just bad luck? Uh, you know, I think they know what to do, you know, and, and how to play it. I think uh, sometimes you get some refs that call it one way, and then the next week, uh, whatever you did was that wasn't allowed is allowed. and. So it confuses them, you know, when there's not a lot of consistency in the officiating. Um, so I think that's that's a little bit of the problem. Um, but, I mean, the guys are playing physical, but they're keeping it clean, which is exactly what I ask of them. You know, that's exactly what we want. We wanted to, uh, you know, you could play hard, you could play physical, you just got to be clean. Um, the rest of the stuff, you know, it'll kind of sort itself out. But for the most part, your team has talked about this discipline issue before. I mean, yeah, it's, it's something that we always talk about. You know, before the game, we talk about some of the, the, the keys to winning and what we need to do. And, you know, it's always part of it is always stay out of the box. So um, and then you get a penalty, you go to the box, you know, you're not going to be able to debate it with the ref. And uh, so I think, you know, that, that sometimes leads to a second bad penalty or something like that and trying to cut down on the retaliation stuff. So. Um, you know, again, a lot of new guys on the team, and so there's a little adjustment factor on their end of it too, and uh, I think they're doing a good job with it. Now, Coach, a very important thing as well is while your team is in the box, a very important factor on the ice is your special team's ability. Now, I don't want to take anything out of the NC State ice hockey playbook here, but when you and your coaches look and analyze certain plays about power plays and penalty kills, what do you guys tend to look at, and how do you guys tend to set up your team related to the game? Um, basically, on the, on the power play or a penalty kill, everyone has an assignment. And, uh, you know, when, you're, when you get to watch the video or just, you know, in conversation amongst the coaches, because we don't always have video, uh, it, it, are, the guys, are the guys going where they need to go? Um, if F1 is there, is F2, you know, where he needs to be? Is, you know, if not, you know, what is, are we covering for it? You know, are we recovering? Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of like a little bit of a chess game sometimes so you want the guys to be in the right places for uh you know what what's going to happen or also be able to you know react to things that you, you can't script everything out right so uh we give them a little bit of something to go with and um we let them run with the rest now as well coach on the power play at least one of the most important things is getting that first shot off within the first several seconds now I i've noticed this a lot when i'm commentating on pack tv as well what do you tell your guys in the locker room about these power plays and how important it is to get that quick shot really fast, right off the draw? You know, I always tell them it's power play, not keep away, right? So, you know, go in, gain possession, uh, gain the zone, and then let's, uh, let's try to find, a, you know, our open guy and uh, let's just get the puck to the net and 
see what happens from there. And you would agree as well that getting that first shot is just so important, and a play can really happen within the first 10 seconds of any power play, like at the defining moment for the next two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and then, okay, so, you know, after the shot's taken, well, what's everyone going to do? Right. You know, you can't stand and admire it and see if it goes in, right? Some, you know, someone's got to be there in case it goes wide or high or, you know, if there's a rebound. So, uh, you know, everyone's got, got a responsibility and, um, you know, as long as, as long as, you know, they can, they can react to everything, we'll be okay. So, Coach, another big factor in your team as well is your performance on the road. Now, sadly, we don't have any footage from those games because we did those on radio broadcast, but your team has entered some very tantalizing crowd environments, but they have sufficed well, especially in your 6-1 to one blowout over Wake Forest University. How do the guys react, and how are they able to stay sane and really focus on their game during those really tough crowd environments, like the UVA game as well, where they did lose 5-3? to three? I mean, you, you, can't, you can't let that factor into, you know, any decisions you make. Um, you, you really got to be able to tune it out. And, you know, that's, that's going to be, you know, an important part of playing because now you come off, you got to focus on what's going on on the ice. And if you, if you get distracted by all the stuff that goes on around you, you're, you're not going to be prepared for your next shift. So, uh, you know, I, I don't see them talking to the crowd or, or anything like that or, or getting flustered by the crowd. They just, they just kind of stay focused on what they're doing. And, um, you know, talking on the bench a little bit keeps your mind focused on what's going on instead of outside uh, sources. And um, I, I think they're just doing a good job with that. And I'm sure it's easier to play in front of the home crowd as well, where they're obviously behind the NC State ice hockey team compared to when we're on the road as well. Well, yeah, of course. And let's be realistic. Our guys, are, are, our fans aren't exactly you know, a bunch of church mice. Um, <laughs> they're, a little, they're a little abusive in ways. Nothing bad, but, you know, then we go someplace and, and we get abused. And so, you know, you, you roll with it, right? So, I mean, they, they're used to noise and stuff like that because we get pretty good crowds. So I think they've just done a, a good job of tuning it out. Especially during the UNC Charlotte game, which we will talk about right after this break here at Most Cameron Village. Here, Zach Soli alongside the man of the hour, uh, head coach Mike Azillo. We'll be right back to talk more about the NC State ice hockey team. Build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. First online order, 10% off. Promo code online. This university is on a march to achieve our full potential. We help empower each other to dream big and do big. Our students are in a position to point to specific projects that they did in the real world, and that sets them apart. Companies want to hire NC State students. We're going to find solutions to some of the big problems and challenges. It's in the DNA of the place. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. Thank you for coming back with us here at Most Cameron Village Wally, Zach Salai, alongside the man of the half hour, head coach Mike Azillo. This is sponsored by Most Cameron Village here at 919-999-3999. A lot of nines, of course, and you can also find it at 919.catering.mos.com. Now, coach, let's get right back on track here. Let's talk about the very first road game after that Wake Forest game. One of the most tantalizing games that you've been in, the rematch of what happened in the Stephen Russell Memorial Tournament, a 5-3 to three loss. Now, it was a very difficult game, a long bus ride there and an even longer bus ride back, but one of the things that we really want to talk about, of course, it was the home of the ACCHL tournament, which you guys clinched. It was a very important game as well, but there was a lot of lapses. There were a lot of things that went wrong with that game, Coach, but talk to us about your overall thoughts on the game, because for those who weren't able to listen, it was still a fairly decent game for your team, even though you guys got the loss. Um, I think it was a better performance against UVA um, th than our, our game at the Russell tournament. Uh, I don't think the bus ride really factored into it at all. Um, the guy, we got there early enough and we had a chance to go out and uh, walk around. It was a really nice day and uh, everybody had a chance to go get something to eat and got a good run in and stuff like that. So I don't think the bus ride really was a factor. Um, you know, it, UVA seems to have our number at this particular point, but that's okay because I'll we'll get it back. Um, but you know, listen, we're not going to win every game, you know, and we were certainly in it. 
Um, and, and so you take things away from that, right? I mean, you take things away from your wins and your losses. And, uh, you know, there were a couple of things we took away from that as far as uh, playing in that rank. Uh, a little bit of, uh, a couple of things we did differently preparing to go up there just to see if it, if it uh, helped us um, playing on the smaller rank. And again, that's something we could take back because we're, we're going to play there at the end of the season tournament. So uh, it gives us something to work on um, in the week leading up to that. Um, but, uh, you know, other than that, I mean, like I said, the guys played well. You know, our defensive zone lapses, you know, hurt a little bit. Um, nobody's perfect. we got to clean it up, and we're working on it. And a fun fact as well, the UVA ice sheet is actually smaller than it is here in Raleigh. How does that come into play, Coach? Because obviously your team is much more accustomed to playing on the big ice, making those plays at the right moments. But the UVA ice, it's a bit smaller. Yeah, they got a really small neutral zone. Um, so again, you know, to get guys ready for it, we had to we had to adapt a couple of things we do in practice um, that I'm not going to broadcast. But uh, you know, it, it it helps with some decision making going a little quicker and stuff like that. So uh, I think it helped. Like I said, I think we had a better game against them than we did at the Russell tournament. And uh, yeah, I'll always look forward to look playing playing them again. Especially a smaller neutral zone could affect how the team sets up on the four check and the back check and how they're able to trap the other team, try to steal that puck as well. But definitely a lot of those plays in the neutral zone led to some interesting penalties as well. Towards the end, Luis Jimenez or one of the players took a shot against I believe it was on the UVA goaltender, the puck came back and Chris Hudson, Davis Hudson rather, got hit in the back of the head and there was a huge scuffle at the end of the game, coach. Now, me and Ethan were there covering the game for WKNC radio. We couldn't see much of what was going on down there. Did you get any insight to what was going on? No, actually, I, you're talking about the very end of the game. The very end. Thanks. So that was down the far end. Yeah. Uh, we had a little situation going on behind the play. Uh, which was more towards where we were that I was a little more focused on. Um, so, no, I, honestly, I did not see uh, what went on back there. It so. was, yeah, it was an unfortunate sequence of events because up to the most part, your, your team was very disciplined up until that point. I don't recall many penalties being taken by the team as well, so that's definitely a promising sign. Yeah, actually, um, I, if, if I recall, we, we didn't have a lot of penalties. I don't think there were a lot of penalties in the game, you know, per se. Um, so it was, it was a pretty clean game. I mean, they're, they're a pretty clean team. So, you know, you're, you're going to get a couple here and there, and, you know, so are they. And, um, yeah, like I said, I, it was just it was down the other end, and there was, there was a little something going on behind the play that uh, I was watching what was going on, and there was a ref back there. I was watching what he was seeing, and uh, so that's where my attention was focused. Now, the UNC Charlotte game was one of the team's best offensive showings of the season, an 8-5 to route over the 7-3-1 and at the time, UNC Charlotte 49ers. Now, Coach, talking about the performances from Hayden Dewey, one of Pac TV's players to watch consistently, along with Luis Jimenez, who had a goal and probably couple of assists, and Sam Beneshevitz, of course, his double hat-trick. What happened with the offense in that game? What was the secret to success? You know, we <laughs> give Sam the puck. I mean, that, that seemed to work. You know, the thing about Sam was, uh, you know, his, his six goals were scored five different ways, right? He had, a, he had a nice backhander from about a foot or two out. He had a shorty. He had the empty net goal. Uh, he had that slap shot that he took on the on the draw uh, on the stride. That was a beautiful shot. You know, um, I mean, he he played well. It was just one of those nights where things were clicking for him. Um, Hayden's been playing very well. You know, Luis. You know, Sam set him up uh, with a nice shot in the slot. So, um, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta get pucks to the net, right? If you want to be successful, you you can't. I always tell them if you played a team of mites and you didn't shoot. The best you could do is tie, right? So you got to get pucks to the net, and uh, that's, what, that's what we were doing. Talking about getting pucks to the net as well, you guys were up 4-2 to two heading into that third period, but there were several bad bounces and defensive lapses that made pulling off the win, you know, very difficult. It was a great game nonetheless, Coach, but what happened defensively in that game that prevented Josh Cannon from making the saves that he needed to make in that game? I think Josh played a great game. Um, I, there were a couple of bad bounces, and you really can't fault him. You know, um, I'm sure he'd like to have, you know, maybe two of those back. Um, but bad bounces are, I mean, we've scored goals off of bad bounces, and it, it's, it's going to happen. Um, but you just, you have to put it aside because there's nothing you can do about it, you know. Uh, again, defensive zone, you know, talking about where guys should be and, um, you know, maybe a little bit better in coverage. Um, but again, these are, 
it's easy to get those learning points in when you win because it's just easier to go back and look at it, you know, especially with some of the guys. Um, but, yeah, no, I thought, I thought Josh played well. And, um, you know, the defensive zone coverage is something that we've been working on and we will continue to work on. So, uh, you know, just a, another game, another lesson learned. Now, Josh Cannon, of course, is the backup to Joey Hall, but along with that, you have a third string goalie in Ian Hutchison, who played outstanding in the Duke game the one time that he did play the season. But in general, Coach, how important is it to have three solid goaltenders you can rely on at any time at any given point? Yeah, it makes it easier to sleep at night, that's for sure. Um, you know, jo Joey's playing well, Josh is playing well, and, uh, you know, and no one at any point that I can throw Ian in. Um, you know, he did well in the skills competition. Uh, we did a little three-on-three -three with uh, UNC uh, the day before the PNC game, uh, and Ian was in net for that. Uh, we beat them one nothing. Andrew Kristoff scored. So, uh, you know, it's just a quick little three-on-three, -three, so it's, it's not really a lot. But, uh, you know, Ian played well, and, uh, you know, I, I would be confident if I had to put him in um, that he can get the job done. Now, talking more about the heroics of Andrew Kristoff, who had that one nothing goal in the one nothing route, of course, of UNC Chapel Hill during that intermission game, the Wilmington game. It was an outstanding game. It was a little bit of a late game as well. It went past 12.30 at night, but it was an outstanding one as well. 4-4 four to four heading into overtime. Nothing happened there. Went to the shootout, and who was the hero? Andrew Kristoff. So talk about the two-goal comeback you guys had, and as well, a finally, a hard-working shootout girl for a hard-working guy, Andrew Kristoff. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, as far as coming back, you just got to be persistent, you know. You just got to stay the course. You just got to get pucks to the net and get bodies there, you know. Uh, Lower of averages, eventually they go in, right? And so, you know, we were able to tie it up, and that was good. Um, and then, you know, we, uh, we went with, uh, with, with a couple of guys on the shootout, and I thought back to last year when I had uh, a shootout. We were playing up in Liberty, and uh, Andrew Kristoff, uh, won the game for us against Louisville. So I looked at him and I said, you're up. And he went and he put it in. And uh, I was very happy for him. He was, uh, I think he deserves it. You know, he works really hard. Definitely the hardest working guy on the team. Um, definitely sets a good message to the other guys. And um, if I need an energy guy, I mean, he's my guy. He's always out killing penalties, you know, he four checks hard. So um, it was good to see him put that one home. Yeah, Andrew Kristoff definitely is one of the better players on this team for effort-wise, and he's definitely one of the guys that really sparks the offense and sparks a lot of good things about this team. Now, we can't go this episode without talking about the backyard brawl that happened at the PNC Arena on November 20th. That was an outstanding game, Coach, both for the awareness of NC State hockey, UNC hockey, and of course just raising more awareness for collegiate hockey here in North Carolina. Now. Coach, what were your overall thoughts in the game? Because there were significant contributions from depth players, like the first star of the game, Eric Webb, who had a breakaway goal as well from Ryan Lensmeyer, the tantalizing physical and defensive effort from Ellis Rushford. Just what can you say about the depth of this team and how well they performed at the backyard brawl? Well, I, I mean, as far as the defense goes, Ellis is a good physical player, you know, and um, he definitely brings that element to the game. Um, you know, he got, uh, he got an assist on uh, Webby's first goal. Uh, just, again, getting it to the net, right? That's his job, get it to the net. And uh, Eric was in a good spot, tipped it, uh, beautiful tip. Um, you know, you can't always rely on Sam and Luis to do all our scoring. You know, if we're going to win games, it's got to come from some of the other guys. You know, Hayden Dewey had a nice goal. Um, I mean, it, I've been kind of talking to Webby more about shoot, shoot, shoot trying to throw a pass across and it goes off, you know, one of the UNC kids, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter how it went in, it just matters that it went in. And um, so, it, you know, you could see the excitement in his face, you know, uh, it's been a while since he scored, so um, I, was, I was very happy for him. So, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be able to rely on everybody else to play, not just your top line. And adding on to that as well, the dynamic duo of Sam and Luis only um, totaled up to about three points the night. Luis had a goal and an assist. Sam had an assist. So it definitely was promising to show that the depth could step up and really step into the role of that top line where Sam and Luis, of course, they want to be the leaders for this team, but they can't be the entire team as well. It's a full team effort, Coach, and that's one of the things that you, you got to be happy about, especially with your coaching staff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, uh, we, we tend to rely on, uh, you know, Sam, Luis, and Eric. Um, but... You know, the, the other guys got to pull through too. So, and, and I think a few guys are kind of overdue, you know, and it, so getting that contribution, it kind of also tells the team that, hey, you know, we're, we're all in this together. You know, it's not just, you know, 
to a three-man show. And you got to be pleased as well. Will Bieberdorf is back in the lineup after a long absence at the start of this season. Now, Coach, what can you say about Will Bieberdorf and his impact to this team both last year, this year, and every year that he's been here? Yeah, I mean, Will, Will's a great kid, and, and he, he works really hard, you know. Uh, he puts in time, you know, off ice. Um, you know, he's always looking to improve his game. Um, he, he'll, he works with anybody, you know, or, you know, with Ryan or, or Tyler or Trevor. You know, it doesn't really matter to him who. Um, you know, he had a couple of good shots. Uh, he, that's a guy I'd like to see bury one, um, not from lack of trying, but, you know, it, it'll go in. Uh, he's got a good attitude, and, uh, yeah, it, it's great having him back. It's good seeing him healthy enough to play. Now, Coach, now we need to talk about, of course, the power punch and defense as well. Your freshman defenseman in Ellis Rushford and Cam Masakowski. Their development since the beginning of the season has been one of the most incredible things that I've seen out of collegiate hockey, and that's a big thing to say, of course, but they have been consistently the best defenseman on this team, Ellis Rushford being the good, silky, strong, physical defenseman and Cam Mazikowski adding that really that punch on the offense had a hat trick in the Wake Forest game has just about seven goals right now according to the ACHA website so coach talking about Ellis Rushford's beautiful skating ability Cam Mazikowski's towering presence and offensive ability how potent is this offense going to be in the next several years for NC State Hockey offense or, or, or defense offensively just their play in general how just much? their play okay so um yeah i mean you're you're only gonna they're only gonna get better right it's the first year in the league and you know you're playing different teams and you're going to different rinks and kind of seeing how things go a little bit and uh I think they, they, yeah, they clearly they've come along well. Uh, Ian O'Rourke getting him back from uh, his broken finger has been. Uh, he had a, a really couple of beautiful plays in the in the game. He broke up that one two on one. Um, you know, he had that wrap around, which is a great, you know, thing to do. Um, question about whether or not it went in, um, but you know, whatever. It, it, you know, it didn't get counted, but the presence of mind to be able to do that was good. Um, Davis is just playing so strong, you know, he's just so solid defensively. Uh, you know, then we got uh, Copley, Coke, uh, Copelandberg and, and Chris Wing, you know, their play is solid, you know, especially when they're stepping up and challenging. So, um, yeah, it makes for, a, uh, makes for a good group, makes for a good cohesive group. And definitely one thing that I've seen with your uh, defensive um, core coming from the beginning of the season is their positioning and their ability to bounce back after tough games as well. So we actually just saw a little bit of a clip right there from yeah. Ellis Rushford. As you can see right there, beautiful chip of the puck outside. His hockey sense has got to be one of the best on this team. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he's, he knows what to do and, and where to do it. And, um, you know, it's getting, got, getting the forwards back to, to compliment them. You know, as again, you, you know, you got a lot of new guys and, you know, they're getting to know one another and uh, I think it's gotten better, and it just makes us a little bit more effective getting the puck out of the zone and getting the rush going the other way. Now, Coach, before we wrap up with some Twitter questions, we have to talk about this um, upcoming January schedule. Your first game of the season is against a team that this will be your first time, if not one of your only other times. It's a very rare matchup between you and Delaware. Now, it's going to be a bit of a tantalizing matchup, of course, as your team has to take on um, Stephen Bryson, uh, Ryan Morrison, goaltending from Eric Bernberg, who are the stars of Delaware hockey as well. So how will your team be able to bounce back from a very long Christmas break, shake off all the holiday goodies, and get back right into the swing of things? I mean, that's certainly something that we talked about, you know, before we uh, broke for the season. You know, we, uh, we got a tough game coming back. We used to go home and home with Delaware, then it kind of subsided a little little bit so it's good to have them coming back down here and we'll probably go back there next year they've always been a good club they've always been deep um, so and, and the guys know I mean there's a lot at stake the second semester is only like five weeks so there's not a lot of practice time there's not a lot of games um, you know and then you have the end of season tournament so that was what do you want to do at the end of this year you know you, you've been going for a couple of months you're in good shape you know you got your wind and everything and you know, you're going to let it go over six weeks and try to start from scratch. You know, if you're not going to, if you're going to do that, then you're not really going to give the team a chance. So um, they, they all understand it, you know, and I know I walked in the locker room today and there's no gear there, maybe three or four sets. Um, so I think a lot of guys took their stuff, took it home and, and planned to play over the, over the break. So that's a good thing to see. And that's got to be a great thing as well, getting ready for that difficult month of January as well, facing off against teams like UNC Charlotte and Clemson and Chapel Hill. And that just, that January schedule. It's going to be a tough one back, yeah. 
Absolutely, and getting prepared for the ACCHL tournament as well. I'm sure your team is very excited about that, Coach. But now we come to one of the new exciting parts over the boards here where Coach will review some Twitter questions and ask them some, some of the fans that we asked on Twitter from Pack TV. So, Coach, with Joey Hall playing his mask off against UNC, where can his growth take him in another year of hockey? Playing his mask off? Um, you know, Joe's a, Joe, Joe's a good, good goaltender. And when he's focused, he's on. And um, he, the, the, the harder the game, the more shots, the more, you know, dialed in he gets. And uh, so um, we, we expect big things out of him second semester, and we expect a big senior year out of him. Absolutely, Coach. And Joey Hall is going to be instrumental to this team going forward. The next question comes from Logan. Coach G, with all the changes made at the start of the year, are you happy where things stand at the end of the fall semester? I am. Uh, I definitely am. I think, uh, you know, again, we, we had a lot of new guys coming in and, and uh, you know, we've, we've had a, a lot of good practices and, you know, we've, uh, we've talked about maybe some adjustments in our defensive zone and we've worked on certain things and, you know, the, the guys are doing it. You watch the video, you can see the guys are doing things and, uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy with the, uh, the record we have and I'm happy with the direction we're in. Absolutely, Coach. Now, this comes from Brian. Coach G, what actions do you take to get the momentum back on your side during a game? You know, a lot of it is just kind of making sure that the guys aren't getting, like, uh, too worked up, you know. Um, let me get worked up, which I tend to do. Um, <laughs> but I, I just want them focusing on what's going on. Look, it's the same team. They have the same jerseys. It's the same rink. Everything's the same. Um, so if, if we've lost a little momentum, just, you know, a couple of energy shifts. Um, don't worry about, you know, the scoring thing. Just go make sure we have control of the puck. Maybe put the body on a few guys um, and just, you know, keep the shifts a little quicker, a little faster, get everybody into a flow, and then we get back to what we were doing. Quickly before the next Twitter question here, Coach, just I want to talk about how important it is to have quick shifts. And if you could answer that really quickly because, well, quick shifts, of course. How important is make sure your bodies get on and you have fresh bodies on the ice and you always have guys that are recycling and making sure that everyone has a chance to play? I mean, you, you, you don't want the shifts, technically, I mean, you really don't want a shift going more than like 35 seconds um, up and down because what happens is if you stay out too long, then you get a little fatigued, right? And if you get the puck, you're probably going to get caught on a rush or you're not going to be able to get back and back check. And it also kind of lends to, you know, a little sloppy play and sometimes you take a penalty because you're, you're a little too tired. Uh, and we've got, we've got four lines and there's no reason for anybody to be out there for that length of time. You know, power plays are a little different. You know, if we're controlling it, I don't expect them to change. Um, you know, if, e even on a regular, you know, five on five, if we're in the zone and, and we're controlling it, I don't expect them to change at that point. But um, first opportunity they get, and let's get some fresh legs out. And if we just keep, keep going with fresh legs, you know, good things are going to happen. Awesome. And our final Twitter question for the day, Coach, how important to this team are Sam and the other seniors this year? You know, we, we've got a really good uh, core of seniors. Uh, luckily, we'll have Sam coming back next year. Um, but I know that a couple of years back, we talked to the guys that are now seniors and, and said, you know, there's going to be a legacy when you leave. Um, and what do you want that to be? Uh, and, and so we want the guys um, bringing the new guys along and, uh, you know, and buying into the system and, you know, making some cohesiveness in the locker room and on the ice. And, you know, if we have any issues, you know, get them addressed, get them addressed quick. Um, and I think they've done a tremendous job of that. And um, I, seniors are going to be missed, but I think that they've left a good legacy. And I think the guys that are coming up behind them are going to follow suit. And I think they're just going to make the team better each year. All right, Coach, it's been an honor and a pleasure to talk with you tonight in this episode of Over the Boards here at Moe's Cameron Village Raleigh. Now, I hope, Coach, that your uh, Christmas vacation is filled with a bunch of gifts from Santa Claus and no lumps of coal. Maybe a lump of coal to start up a fire for yeah, the team heading you know, into the next we'll semester. See. But uh, absolutely, Coach, just thank you. It's been an honor. And this is it for this episode here of Over the Boards. I was proud to be your host today, Zach Soy, alongside the man himself, Coach Mike Azilla. We'll see you next time here for Over the Boards.
We build it, you demolish it. The legendary Home Wrecker Burrito. Come build yours today with 20 plus fresh ingredients. First online order, 10% off. Promo code online.